Hey y'all, Data Guy here, back with a new setup, um, new angle, new apartment. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. I know you're used to seeing me on the right side of the screen, but now I'm on the left, it's crazy. Um, if you don't like it, let me know and I'll uh, try and figure out how I can change it. Um, but anyway, without further ado, enough talking about my camera setup. Today, what we're here to talk about is how to use AWS Glue and Airflow together. Um, so AWS a video I made on AWS Glue and kind of managing it through Airflow is inexplicably one of my most popular shorts. And so I figured it was deserving of a full video showing you kind of a full DAG uh, to, sh to show you all the different options of how you can manage AWS Glue via Airflow. And um, the reason why you'd want to do that is Glue is a really, really easy or not e it's a little bit clunky to use, but it's really efficient way to do serverless data integrations between AWS services. Um, so instead of needing to, you know, use an external service to manage, hey, bring the data out from an S3 bucket and then drop it in a Redshift database, Glue makes kind of those point to point connections within AWS really easy to use. Um, when you integrate it with things outside of AWS, that's when it can be a little bit more difficult. But that's where Airflow comes into play, um, where you can use Airflow to kind of link Glue to other workloads, have it integrated into your existing pipelines um, and all that fun stuff. So that's what we'll be going over today is different ways that you can use Glue uh, with Airflow. Um, so enough of this fun Glue marketing screen, we'll take it over to VS Code and I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how you can set up a Airflow environment to use Glue and then show you a DAG that shows you a bunch of different ways uh, of how you can use Glue within Airflow. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing you want to do, obviously, set up a new Airflow environment um, and then just go to your good old requirements file um, and then add this Apache Airflow providers Amazon equals 8.16. Um, and if you're not using a requirements file, you're just running on a source system, just run pip install, it'll have the same effect. Um, and then once we're done with that, we can go into our DAGs folder and create our DAG. So here we go, let's call this glue airflow.py. Um, and then once we've created our DAG, what we're going to do is import all of our packages like we always do. Um, so here, I'm gonna import quite a few for this just to kind of show you all the different ways you can interact with it and have it interact with you know the different systems like task, decorators, chain, uh, and you know, just really everything within Glue that you can manipulate. Um, and also the S3 operators, because we need to have some data that is moving from point to point and we're just gonna use S3 buckets as the kind of point to point. So because this is just a demo uh, DAG, um, but you, know, you would import whatever other things you want to be importing from or integrating into. Um, and so here import pendulum, decorators task, chain, um, data brew. So Glue Data Brew is like an analytics builder. So here you can take the information that you're passing through Glue and actually just turn it into dashboards. So I'll show you how to uh, use that alongside just regular Glue operations. Um, and then also just importing uh, different ways to interact with uh, Glue. I'm actually gonna take, sorry, screwed up. I'm not gonna do Glue Data Brew. Um, actually not, I am, Never mind. So let me just add it back. So in addition to Glue Data Brew, we also have the Glue Job Operator, the Glue Crawler Operator. Um, those are three bucket operators that I mentioned earlier, our Glue Job Sensor, Glue Crawler Sensor, and um, so this is how we can sense the completion state or just state of a Glue job, um, and then Trigger Rule, and just some utilities for just pulling information, hey, what is your environment ID, system test, context builder, and just pruning logs from AWS. Um, so once we have all of our packages installed, we are then going to uh, set our DAG ID um, to example glue. Um, this is just how Amazon, I guess, likes to do it. And then we're going to set a role ARN key. Um, so this role ARN key is just going to allow us to interact with AWS services um, and just use a key instead of needing to actually just define it for everything. So here we have, we're just building a system context builder, adding that role IRN key and then building a system context so that we can interact with uh, S3 and glue using a predefined role. Um, so this role that you're gonna need to set up, just make sure that it has access to glue and also to your S3 buckets. Um, then we're also going to set up a CSV, which is just going to be you know some basic data that we use for our example glue jobs just prices of an apple milk and bread uh the good old consumer market basket very 
relevant in these inflationary times. And then we are also going to have a PySpark script that we're going to use to glue to actually uh, operate on the above sample data set. Um, so you can see you're importing Spark context, glue context, um, creating a glue context instance. Um, so this is similar to a kind of like a hook where you're creating a hook into glue and then using the context in there to actually perform glue interactions. Um, and here we're just creating a frame. So just kind of like a pandas data frame from this CSV um, and saying these are X number in these tables. Um, and this is just Jinja templating saying, hey, you know, these are the amount that's actually going to find out are in this table. Um, and then writing this and saving it into an S3 bucket. Then after we're done with that, uh, we're going to create our first task, which is just going to be a task that's going to, sorry, get the ARN name from uh, exactly what you're imagining, this ARN system context. Um, so here, feeding in our ARN wall string and then just splitting it. Um, and this is just kind of some housekeeping so we can actually use this role downstream in the DAG. Then what we're going to do is create a cleanup task for glue. So glue, trigger rule, uh, once everything is all done, this is going to run a glue cleanup task, which is going to delete our crawler job and database. And this is really just to you know make sure, hey, let's delete any resources that we used here that we're not actually gonna use downstream or after this DAG, because this is a demo DAG and I don't wanna pay for AWS resources I'm not using. Um, so we're just gonna delete them after we're done. And then we can start to create our DAG. So to create our DAG, just go in here, say with DAG, DAG ID, schedule, start date, tags, catch up. Um, and then after that, we're going to test context. So this is just creating a contact, again, creating that kind of hook into our AWS environment using that uh, ARN role that we defined up for later. And then we're gonna define a whole other host of variables up here. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this inside the DAG is so that it will only be parsed when we actually run this DAG. Um, so here we're getting our test context environment key ID, uh, role ARN key, glue crawler, um, and just feeding this environment ID, which is going to be pulled out of this test context um, into our crawler, glue DB, glue job, glue bucket, um, and then also getting our glue name, or yeah, our role name. So this is just getting all the information around the role and then kind of injecting it into the, you know, the current environment ID and to the crawler, and this will make it completely uh, unique for each, because every time you create a new system context environment, or environment, then that environment ID is going to change. So just, you know, easy way to have a way to, you know, run this repeatedly and have unique IDs every time you run it. Then after that, we'll create our glue crawler config. So just set a name, role, database name, targets, the S3 targets. So you're going to put your buckets that you're using. In this case, again, using Jinja templating just to inject the bucket name. Um, and just telling, giving the glue kind of the different locations that it's going to need to target. Um, then we're going to have a series of S3 bucket operators. And since that's not what this video is about, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and go through them really quickly. Um, which is here, we have our S3 create bucket operator, S3 create object operator, and then our S3 create object operator again. Um, and this is going to create a bucket, upload a CSV to that bucket by creating an object in there. So uploading that example CSV that we just created, uh, replace equals true. So just overwrite it if it already exists. And then upload our script as well, which is going to be this PySpark script we set up earlier. Um, and that, is all we're going to need to do here. Um, so here, data equals example script, and then just feeding in the glue name, uh, the glue database we're using, and the bucket name we're going to use as well. So now that we're done creating our S3 resources, let's start using some glue operators. We've got all our variables set up, so it's time to actually use our glue crawler. Um, so here, what we'll do is to use the glue, claw, the glue crawler, um, just execute crawl S3, um, and you have the config that we created up here. So your name, role, database, and target. So bringing data. Um, and so what this glue crawler is going to do is take the information of, you know, what is the schema we're using for those S3 buckets, and then just uploading that schema into that database. Um, so then what we're going to do is set uh, false, so wait for completion. So our glue crawler operator by default um, is just going to wait by default for it to actually uh, complete and then it'll mark it as success. Normally I would recommend actually setting this as true because then you're just kind of adding an unnecessary glue sensor downstream. But just for the reasons of showing you a glue sensor, I'm just gonna show you what wait for qual looks like. So here, 
wait for crawl, then you can use glue, glue crawler sensor to tell you when this crawl um, has been successful. Um, so instead of just using the sensor that's built into glue crawler, we're just going to use the sensor operator, um, again, just for the purposes of showing you how to use it. Then once we're done with that, we have our glue job that we're going to submit. Um, so here we have Submit glue job, glue job operator. Uh, we have our job name, script location. Um, here we're just referencing that S3 bucket location from earlier. Uh, I am role, and then the different KWARGs for how you want to configure this job. So choosing your worker type, the amount of workers, the glue version uh, that you want to actually be running this uh, script. So here, this is you know something that's. I don't love that glue is that you have to upload your ETL scripts into S3 and then execute them there, but some people like that approach, so I'm not going to fault it too much. Um, and here, what this is going to do is just submit the glue job, um, so the strip location, so this ETL script, um, to actually run our glue job, join that data, and then tell us, hey, these are uh, the attributes of that data set. You know, there's these many, these many roles, these many uh, fields within there. Then again, we're going to wait for completion, set it to false, and then also use a, another sensor. So use the glue job sensor this time. Um, we're here, we're going to wait for job, uh, glue job sensor, and then you can see just reference that same job name, the glue job name, um, reference the run ID. So here we have submit glue job dot output, and this is just going to be able to give us the job ID at the output from that previous glue operator task. Um, and then this will also just print the logs in our airflow logs. Um, then once we're done with that, so set a poke interval. Um, so here we are going to just wait for job poke interval. So just set how often you want this to uh, test that job to see if it's been completed successfully. And then we have our delete bucket operator. So just kind of doing cleanup here, uh, deleting the bucket that we created earlier, just because we want this to kind of be an item potent DAG. We want to just be able to run and then you know be able to run again and do the exact same thing, but not just unnecessarily take up space. Um, so after we're done with that, we will go to log cleanup equals print logs. Um, and here you have you know glue crawlers, with Smith job, and just basically is pruning all the logs for all the different outputs. Um, and then what we're going to do finally to chain it all together is, you guessed it, use the chain function. Um, so here this chain function is going to allow us to just go boop, 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 all in a list of all our different jobs, um, add them together, and then this will turn it into just a linear DAG within the Airflow UI. Then we're also going to import the watcher. Um, so this is just going to be able to watch our DAG. Um, and then we are going to have a list tags equals tasks. Uh, and this is just going to make sure that uh, properly marks success or failure um, within the last task. So all this is doing is just saying, hey, make sure that the uh, teardown task actually ran. Then all we're going to do is declare our DAG, which we actually already did. Um, so we're all set. So now I'm going to boot up Airflow with just a good old Astro dev start. and. Uh, to meet you over in the UI. So here in the Airflow UI, you can see, uh, as with most chain DAGs, it's a very simple DAG looking through, uh, just going through all the steps we just said. So creating that uh, bucket, uploading the CSV, uploading the script, crawling through it, waiting for that crawl, submitting the glue job, waiting for the job, then running a clue, cleanup task, just deleting everything that we used, and then also deleting the buckets that we used. Um, so Super simple setup here, and because we actually define those connections within the DAG, you don't need to uh, use the connection management UI. You can just use that role ARN um, and pull everything out from that. So that's really all I have to show you today. Uh, that was, I hope this kind of has helped you figure out, hey, you know, these are some of the different ways that I can interact with Glue and Airflow, maybe integrate it into your existing DAGs, um, and just hope you